Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Manas Sharma and welcome back to FizzWiz. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to calculate the cohesive energy per atom for a crystal using quantum espresso and density functional theory. And it's, as an example for this tutorial, we'll be calculating the cohesive energy per atom for the silicon crystal that you can see right over here. And the formula for the cohesive energy per atom is given as shown over here. So essentially you calculate the energy of your crystal, your bulk crystal, and then you divide it by the number of atoms in your crystal or the unit cell actually to get the energy, bulk energy per atom. And then you subtract the energy of the isolated atom, which in this case would be silicon from this energy. And then you take the negative of this difference. And in this convention, if you get a positive value of the cohesive energy per atom, then that means that your crystal is stable, that it will stay together, it will bind prop properly. And if it is negative, then that will mean that your crystal is unstable and it won't stay together. However, in literature, you may find a reverse convention as well, where they don't take the negative of it, and then they will report a negative value of the cohesive energy per atom uh, to indicate that the uh, crystal is stable. And so essentially, as you can already see, we'll need to run two SCF calculations to get the energies for the bulk crystal as well as for the isolated atom. And here I already have the SIF file that is the crystallographic information file for the conventional cell of the silicon crystal. So let me go ahead and open BURAI which is a GUI for quantum espresso and import this silicon uh, conventional cell file SIF file into BURAI and you, as you can see that um, the crystal looks perfectly all right. Now what I will do is I will go to this elements tab and select a different zero potential that is a PAW uh, type of zero potential for this tutorial. Now you can choose any other zero potential that you might prefer, but I prefer this PAW zero potential. And then I will go to the SCF uh, tab and here I will use a sufficiently high value of cutoff a four wave function that is around 50 Redbergs, the suggested cutoff for this particular zero potential, if you have a look over here, is just 44 Redbergs. So this should be good enough. And then I will use a really high value for charge cutoff as well. That is 10 times of the wave function cutoff. And then for K points, I will again use a really high value, something like 8 by 8 by 8. And I will keep the occupations to be fixed as this is a semiconductor and not a metal. And then I will go ahead and save this project by the name SI conventional, I guess. And then I'll go ahead and run this calculation on four threads. Now, while this calculation is running, let's go ahead and run the calculation for the isolated silicon atom. So once again, let's go ahead and import this SIF file. And what we'll do is we will come to this input file over here and get, get rid of uh, the seven silicon atoms and just uh, let one silicon atom remain there, reflect these changes. And um, also what I'll do is I'll perhaps um, use a larger value of the lattice parameter because otherwise um, the atoms will interact with their periodic images. And this calculation is supposed to be for an isolated atom. So let's use a really large value of like 12 angstroms um, so that the atoms don't interact with their periodic images. And also um, let me do a slight cosmetic change where I will slightly um, translate the atom to be somewhere in the middle of the cell. It doesn't make any difference on your calculation. I just did it for this tutorial so that um, you don't feel like there are two atoms, there's just one atom. And once again, I'll set the zero potential to be the same as the zero potential in my previous calculation. And um, then I will go to the SCF tab. And this time also, I'll have to use the same cutoff values that I used earlier. This is really crucial that your computational method doesn't change. For K points, however, we'll just do a gamma point calculation as um, K points don't really make sense for an isolated atom. And then occupations, um, this time we'll have to keep them at smearing, I'll explain later. Okay, so now let's go ahead and save this and call it SI isolated. Okay, so now comes the most crucial part of this tutorial. Whenever you are running, you know, 
NSCF calculation, DFT calculation for an isolated atom using quantum espresso, you have to be really careful and know the electronic configuration of this atom. And therefore, um, I have already Googled the silicon electronic configuration, configuration, and you see that it contains two p electrons. So essentially, there are two unpaired p electrons in in the p orbitals. So in order to make your simulation also respect this fact or have the same electronic configuration, you'll need to specify magnetization, or essentially you'll need to do a spin polarized calculation. Now in quantum espresso. You can do a spin polarized calculation by setting um, a pair, uh, you know, a keyword called n spin to the value two. Now with BRAI, you can do that by coming here and set the spin polarization to collinear. And now, if you uh, reload your input file, you will see that, as I mentioned, you will use n spin equals two. Then, for the fixing method, you will use atomic. And in terms of quantum espresso input file, it means that you'll have to specify a starting magnetization. And right now it is zero, but in order to uh, do a spin polarized calculation, you need to specify a non-zero value in order to break the symmetry. So let's uh, let's give a value of like uh, 0 0.1. So that will be our initial guess. It doesn't ma matter what value you pick. What matters is that the final uh, ground state contains two unpaired electrons. So now let's reload this file and you can see that I have n spin equals two and starting magnetization as 0.1. And this is the reason actually why I couldn't use smearing or occupations actually as fixed because fixed occupations doesn't work with this uh, magnetization. Okay, so that is it, I guess. Now let's close this, save the um, project again and run the SCF calculation for the isolated atom now. And in the meanwhile, actually the calculation for the SI conventional cell has already completed. So let's have a look at the result there. Come to the log file and search for the final total energy. So here in the end, somewhere uh, I should have the uh, total energy. Okay, so right over here. And now let's go ahead and copy this bulk silicon energy for the conventional cell and paste it in Wolfram. So essentially now I'm trying to evaluate uh, this formula, right? This equation. So let's uh, put a negative sign because there was a negative sign here and then use parenthesis and then put the value of the bulk cell and then divide it by eight actually because, <coughs> sorry, as I mentioned, this has to be per atom. So there are eight atoms in our silicon crystal. So we divide it by eight and then we subtract the value of the isolated atoms energy. So let's see if that calculation has finished. So come to SI isolated, go to results and um, go to SCF. So, okay, so right now we are at third iteration and it hasn't really converged yet. Okay, so now it is actually converged. So let's go ahead and open the SCF file, search for exclamation again and um, so the output is, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and copy this once again and paste it over here and hit enter. Now, this is your cohesive energy per atom, but in grid books. And what we are going trying to do in this tutorial is trying to reproduce an experimental value of like 4.63 electron volts per atom. So let's see how close is this. So let's convert this value in Gridberg to electron volts. And for this, I will use this web app that I have developed. I'll leave the link to it in the description down below. And I'll set the unit of the input value to Gridberg and paste in this value. And here it is. So our value of the cohesive energy per atom for the silicon crystal is 4.51 electron volts per atom approximately which is actually in really good agreement with this experimental value, considering um, that usually uh, you can get even larger differences compared to experiments. So this is actually really good. It's not exactly the same, but it is in pretty good agreement. And the reason for this small difference could be that the experimental lattice parameter of 5.429 is different from the lattice parameter that um, we use for our simulation. And by the way, I got this SIF file from the materialsproject.org, so I'll leave a link to it in the description as well. So yeah, so we used a slightly different lattice parameter and also 
um, maybe the results depend on pseudo potentials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So considering that we only used a PBE exchange correlation function, this result is pretty good. So yeah, so that is it. That is how you calculate the cohesive energy per atom using quantum espresso and density functional theory. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or doubts, leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.